Hello, this is Steve Brzezini, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are at Adobe Premiere Elements, the start screen or the welcome screen. This is a screen that welcomes you when you first launch the program. Although there are options here if you want under the cog for you to set it up so that it goes directly into the editor if you'd like. If you happen to have Photoshop Elements in addition to Premiere Elements, you can now launch directly from the same launch screen right into the photo editor, the organizer, or the video editor. We're going to select the option for the video editor. You can just click on this button here, the name video editor, and that'll take you generically right into an empty project. Or you can select from this little down arrow to the right of it, and select the option to open a new project, open in any project that you're going to browse to, or a recent project. Let's go into our project here. One of the nice things, or one of the nice innovations that Adobe has added to Premiere Elements in the last couple versions, is that the program automatically sets up its project based on the first clip you add to your timeline. So I'm going to go to my project assets. I have a clip that I imported here. I'll drag it down to my timeline. And when I add it, you may see a quick flash on your program the first time you add a clip to the timeline. That quick flash is the program setting itself. Now this is a 1920 by 1080 video. And you notice if I go to edit, project settings, underneath it, under general, the project has automatically set itself up for 1920 by 1080 AVC HD. Now sometimes the program has some problems setting up with QuickTime files or MOV files. And that's only because MOV is such or represents such a wide variety of files out there, video files and media files. Because of that, sometimes the program has trouble recognizing the project specs. I'll show you what to do about that in a moment. But while we're here, let's take a look at our basic workspaces. Now there are two main workspaces here in Premiere Elements that are actually just two sides of the same coin. If we go to Quick View, we have a simplified timeline. Our timeline has a single track for you to add your video files to. And these video files will, of course, include the audio that's on those video files. A narration track, an audio clips track, which is mainly for adding your music soundtracks, and then a title track. And you can only add titles to this upper track. You can't add any video clips to it here in Quick View. So if you just want to throw together a quick video, you've got a bunch of clips, you want to trim them and slice them a little bit and arrange them into a certain order, this is a great workspace to work in. You can work very, very quickly in here. If you want to go more in depth, go over here to the Expert View workspace. And here in Expert View, you can add up to 99. I'm just going to grab on the seam here between the two to stretch this out. You can add up to 99 video and audio tracks in addition to the narration and the music track. So you can create some pretty elaborate projects and you can do things like split screen. Uh, you can do things like picture in picture. You can do like what we call the Brady Brunch grid where you have several videos going in little boxes at the same time. You will need many tracks of video to do that and you'll need to mix many tracks of audio to do more elaborate projects. You can switch back and forth during a single project between these two workspaces. Just if you want to work quickly and easily in the quick space or if you want to work more elaborately in the expert space. But in the meantime, let's talk about one situation you sometimes run into. As I've said, 98% of the time when you add a clip to your timeline, the very first clip, the program is going to automatically set your project settings based on that first clip. Sometimes it doesn't happen. When that doesn't happen, you may see your clip floating inside here. It's much smaller than the video frame, or it may be much larger than the video frame, or something just isn't quite right. Or like above the clip here on the timeline, you may see an orange stripe. You shouldn't see that orange stripe along the bottom of the uh, ticker here at the top of the timeline. You shouldn't see that orange stripe until you start adding effects. If you see it above your first clip on the timeline, that means for some reason the program is not matching your specs correctly, matching the video specs. When that happens, you need to manually set up your project. So to do that, we're going to the File menu and selecting New, Project. And I'm going to select, no, I'm not going to keep this project that we're working on right now. And notice here on the New Project screen, you have options of where to save the project and what to name the project. But if you click on Change Settings, you can go into the Manual Settings. And you notice that here on the Settings panel, we have options for both uh, NTSC, which is most North America and Japan, and uh, PAL, which is mostly represented in Europe. 
they're virtually the same, the settings. Uh, if you're working with video from a DV camcorder or an HDV camcorder, these are tape-based camcorders, you'd select options under each of these and we could toggle those open and look at the available options. If you're working with video from a DSLR that is a higher end still camera, uh, you would choose an option from here and there are a number of sub options underneath there. In most cases what you're going to select is AVCHD. This is the workhorse for today's consumer video and under AVCHD you have options for 1920 by 1080 and you can see in a number of frame rates. Notice that we also have options here under QFHD. These are options for creating a project based on 4K video or ultra high def. That's a video that is a, has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. Select your option here. You can even force it by checking that box there on the new project screen and it will force the program to start a project and work with that project based on the settings that you manually selected. Although as I say, most of the time the program is going to set up your project based on the very first clip you add to your timeline. Now, if you want to know more about this program, stay with us. We got seven more sessions here in basic training. If you want to know everything there is to know about the program, check out the books, moviepix.com guide to premier elements available at amazon.com. And here at moviepix.com, we've got a lot of tips and tutorials at moviepix.com. Hope you'll drop by. I'm Steve Grisetti.